Hello, and welcome back to the Indie Wood Podcast for Season 2, Episode 2. And my co-host for Season 2 is Zena Wild, Hello. actor, producer, writer. Last episode, we talked about finding your people and trusting your people and, and finding, finding your team and trusting your team. And I think what I wanted to explore a bit, because when we were talking about the topics for this podcast, we remembered our conversation before you did this short film that you did with your team, you had these three shots planned that had VFX. I think through conversations with me, with a couple of other people, uh, you ended up scrapping the visual mm -hmm. effects of it and uh, you went for something practical. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about the film mm -hmm. and then these three shots that you wanted to be v VFX. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of get into what happened. Great. Uh, well, the short was... Kind of like it takes place in a dystopian future and all that. So uh, there was a moment that we needed to, uh, there were three moments that were important. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was that there was a light coming out of my hand that was shooting to the other person. So sort of like coming out like that. Mm -hmm. Then there was. And um, so for the people not watching on YouTube, mm -hmm. but listening, when you say like that. Oh, like uh, coming yeah. from down towards the sky, let's okay. say. Okay. Um, so light shooting out of my hand. Mm -hmm. So there was that one moment. There was another moment that I wanted, I wanted the my twin version to fly up in the sky, which was complicated. And there was another moment that uh, supposedly there was like this watch that would stop. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit, actually, not so much the watch would stop, but it was like on screen, you could see how, give a little context, uh, the short is about uh, living in a dystopian future where, where uh, everyone has to sign up for this feature, this app. It's like uh, mandatory by the government mm -hmm. uh, that tells you when you're going to die. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you get uh, 24 hours, they give you a courtesy call. And the film's about that courtesy it, call. It, it films about this woman that's on a run that she gets this courtesy call. Mm -hmm. So there's like all these, uh, a little bit very black mirror-y mm -hmm. kind of like how on screen you would get these, like your heart level yeah. drops. Mm -hmm. So that was another VFX moment that we were trying to get. Um, and of course, because we're thinking about it in terms of efficiency and budget and all these things i asked of course my dp jack to be like how do you how do we do this because i don't know how to do this i can only see it see it but i'm like how do you actually make this happen the director mm -hmm. michelle who uh had a uh, has a vfx person that she works with because she had worked with him before and then Going back to also trusting your team, there's a person that I worked with in New York that he's a VFX person that I was like, can I get him to come over here or can I just ask him? And I'm so glad I called him because he was like, so oh, don't, don't do any of that. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. He's like, you don't need to do that. Just put a light in the bottom mm -hmm. and then I'll talk to Jack and they know each other. Yeah. And we can do that. You can scratch that one moment easy with a light. Um, and the two of them spoke to each other. I had no idea what they were saying. Like, <laughs> Great. I'm glad you Different guys language. understand yeah. the, this, what's going on. And so that was one way of like completely making something way more efficient, easier, cheaper, uh, and creative because it's, that's the other fun part of like finding practical ways to do it and with the same effect and really that i think that for them it's more fun as well it's a lot more fun to do it practically in camera and on set and 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 i i want to talk about the the flying moment mm -hmm. where your twin flies mm -hmm. and when we talked about it it was like yeah you could do it practically but like you know i was like jack might have a better kind of perspective on what to do and then you showed me the behind the scenes and it was you and then like the camera was had, was a close up on you and your feet, mm -hmm. and then just there's two people on each side of you picking you up and like pushing, pulling you, pulling you into the sky, and it worked. It totally worked, like, and it, it actually looks better, I think. Yeah, 
because it looks I feel like if it was painted if it was mm-hmm. VFX it would have mm-hmm. been a little artificial yeah and yeah. then also another thing that was a change which I think was really cool that we changed it in my head in the beginning was the rising of the phoenix so sort of like a bird like whatever and then the more we kept thinking about it and the more i started looking into visuals of what that would look like mm-hmm. i didn't like it yeah i i visually was like this looks cheesy i don't want to do this and that's when i was like okay let me let me think of another way to do it i came up with this version of a uh, a gold statue mm-hmm. almost so that's what came to me in creatively and it was great because everyone was sort of like well you know if you want to do this you need to have a costume yeah it can't be all painted it's going to be super expensive it will be this it will be that and then i'm so glad they said that because once i started googling like images of what that would look like i was like, like a phoenix costume i was like i don't like anything yeah it looks like a <laughs> showgirl it's like a yeah. cheap showgirl this uh, is terrible mm-hmm. so i'm like yeah okay great we're scratching that let me come up with a but another version and what's crazy is that on the day of we were also supposedly uh, we we had um a studio that we were gonna go and they wanted to use a ramp which again i don't understand what they were gonna do i still don't know what they were gonna do but (laughs) michelle and jack knew push you off the ramp and you were gonna fly yes yeah and but we were totally running at the time Mm. and that's how they again the importance of being prepared Mm -hmm. and a pro is so important because Jack had a green screen with him. Mm-hmm. So we had set up you no know, screen screen. Yeah. And uh at, at the beach with no permit. Mm-hmm. Going mm-hmm. back to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Which, on the yeah, beach. You got really lucky. And Which beach? Will Rogers. Okay, so go to Will Rogers to shoot your shorts. Well, actually don't go because <laughs> the the I definitely had to do something angling there. Because oh, the, the They showed up. They showed up. The, showed up. It was so funny. The lifeguard showed up oh no and he was so he was like you gotta go and i literally had to go and chat with him for about in the gold costume like yeah about 45 minutes and i was like and then he was so on board so that's another thing that is important if you're gonna do something with with um illegal (laughs) illegal just be prepared that things are gonna take longer and uh be prepared to be really nice to people that are doing you favors. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like you know you can plan. You said be prepared, and you can be so prepared for everything. But then something could happen. You know, you run a little too long. Like someone does is stuck in traffic. The lifeguard shows up a little too early. Totally. You know, uh, and and uh, things kind of get in the way. And that's when you pivot. And I think when we think about effects, mm-hmm. practical, special, and and uh, visual effects. They do have a place because when we did um, the web series, mm-hmm. Stupid Cupid, there was a teaser we did before that. And there was a moment where we had someone on their phone. Mm. And we thought about doing it practically, but there were so many design elements of the application that just were necessary for it to be a visual visual effect. And so we shot it as a green screen. And thankfully, we had a friend who, could, who did a really good job replacing the screen. And I think, uh, you know, when we were on set, that was such a time saver sure. because we just shot the green screen phone, the thumb going over it, maybe you know the finger poking it once or twice, and we were done. Yeah. But a practical version of that may have been also quick, but would have taken a lot longer. Totally, and that's the thing too. On set, time is the mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. important. Yeah. Because it, especially if you're like with light, you yeah. know, if you're out, out and all that. But for us that day, we really were in a crunch, and if we actually the studio that i had rented and it was like a little uh, like a sound stage esque kind yes. of space mm-hmm. um we had to scratch yeah. because actually what ended up happening one of the things was that it was first the lifeguard thing that took yeah. more time mm-hmm. then it was um uh, the makeup person was taking a little longer than we were expecting i mean so, you were covered completely in gold it was it's yeah, true and so. like, it's true and then <laughs> yeah. thank god we all chipped everybody chipped in every like there were 55 hands on me like cover you in gold yeah and it worked but uh so it wasn't 
there, it wasn't anyone's fault. It's yeah. just things happen. Well, yeah, well, you can't blame anybody unless no. like someone's actively sabotaging you, which yes. shouldn't happen because yes. that's a that's a that's, that's a, whole, a whole other thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But yeah, it's it, things just happen, and you have to roll. Things with the happen, and and that's again going back to the idea of flexibility of like you ha sometimes have to let go of things in yeah. order to 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 adjust. Like mm -hmm. you have to like, and and I think that even in the most in the biggest sets. Even that even happens then, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. it, like things happen. It's meant to be. You just have more money. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the yeah. truth is, if yeah. you have money, it's, you can fix a problem very easy. It's easier to pivot. It, yeah. But, it's like, what's the difference between you know uh, e problem solving on a on a short film and uh, a big blockbuster, twenty million dollars? Exactly. But like you know, the funny thing is though, like going back to the whole idea of the practical stuff, it's like fixing it with uh, creativity and um, being clever yeah. is so rewarding. I think I think that that's so cool because like thinking on your feet like that and being like, I'm, I can just change it to do this and that will get the same effect. That to me is so, it gets me so excited. That's the reason why I love making movies with no yeah. money. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you have to be extra creative and, and, and be, because you have limitations, because you have like, immense obstacles yes like how can i achieve the same story beat the same effect with just something else totally and i, I want to bring up an example i shot a, a short in december that we're currently still editing and there were two sequences one where we had a, an, an actor looking at a television screen and there was a news report mm -hmm. and then there was another sequence where uh, a military plane flew overhead and we kind of panned from left to right mm -hmm. And in the first sequence, uh, I, I, I thought about, oh, why not? We'll just do the green screen and then we'll, we'll, we'll do it in post. And, and because it's just me, like it's me and my friend doing this. It's nobody yeah. else. We were doing it for fun. We spent, I mean, I spent like a 50 bucks on, on dinner. That's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't want to rely on me being able to kind of remember how to do a screen replacement and kind of fix all those things. And so... What I, I do best is like I, I did a lot of work in design and so I was like, I'll just build it. I'll just download some stock footage and I used artlist.io, I believe. Yeah, because they have music and they have stock footage and they have sound effects. And great. Love it. We actually used Artlist for, to score Stupid Cupid, the web series. Amazing. Uh, and so I used the, the stock footage of the news report. I rebuilt the CNN Chiron, like the lower thirds in Photoshop, animated it in Resolve. So I just built out this like segment of uh, a news report mm -hmm. and then I just played it on my TV and I did it practically. And what was really cool is that I got the reflection of the actor in the, in the TV with the image, with like the, the CNN logo. It was, well, I call it a G GNN mm -hmm. or something. And, and it was a lot faster to do that. Well, sorry, it wasn't as fast as it would have been just with a green screen, but I had more control over what the final image would look like Yeah. in that moment. That's and I didn't have to rely on like, oh, hey, I could figure it out in post. Don't do that. Don't save it for post. No. Yeah. And then my friend who was editing, who shot and edited the, the project with me, that sequence with the plane flying overhead, I was like, you know what? I really want that. I think it's really powerful. I'm going to learn how to do that. And I have some background on VFX. Mm -hmm. I'll figure it out. And then he just put in a sound effect mm. in that moment. And when we pan and the actor goes, looks from left to right as the plane, quote unquote, flies by. And it looks so good. And yeah. you don't see a plane, but it just feels I, of right. Of course, of course. And I might just leave it as is. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I really want a plane in that moment. So it's important to have the opportunity to utilize practical, special, and visual effects in your project. Mm -hmm. You should have all three in your toolkit because even for a film with no money, like for, for that film, I'm still going to have some visual elements, VFX elements, because I need smoke on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a film about war. And that should be a part of your toolkit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think going back to what you were saying, it reminded me that I think What's really important when I where I think that people get paralyzed mm -hmm. from doing things is their perfection. Mm -hmm. So they are like, I can't do that because I need this, and then it becomes so overwhelming mm -hmm. when you're thinking about the end. Like I don't know, you got to be Steven Spielberg yeah. or something mm -hmm. that you never start. And the point is to do it. 
literally just do it is this, is this gonna turn it is this a topic gonna turn from vfx into perfectionism because i recently had a whole like experience with that where mm -hmm. i'm learning how to let projects be done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they might not be good it doesn't matter but you, it has to be done you have to move on you have to move on yeah. and it, you have to make something bad to make something good yeah. i mean it was the whole ira glass i think thing that he was saying that it just doesn't matter. Maybe the first thing you make sucks, but then you keep on doing it and then it gets better and better and better. Yeah. And I think that that's really important because so many people I know are paralyzed by that feeling of, and what if somebody says that it's not good? So what? Who cares? Yeah. At least you made it. Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Exactly. They might be making bigger movies than you, but you know. <laughs> but for the most part, everyone yeah. is like loves to be a critic. But yeah. They don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't yeah. make anything. So, it is a practice and the more you think like this can't be done mm -hmm. you're not allowing yourself to that the opportunity to make something someone once said i heard this a long time ago uh in order to be good at something you kind of have to you kind of sort of have to be bad at something first yeah or like maybe the quote was in order to be the first step to being good at something is being kind of sort of bad at something it was adventure time if you know what that is I don't. The weird animated show that I don't think runs anymore. Huh. But it's uh, it was quirky and had a lot of... Haley is nodding uh, from her desk. She understands. <laughs> um, but it was a quirky show about, you know, growing up and kind of being being kind to yourself. That's awesome. Yeah. So we talked about practical effects and visual effects and, and, and special effects. For this film, uh, do you have any VFX? Do you have any visual effects that you still have to do? We do, we have some, that is the final moment, even though we're using that. Where they're just physically lifting you. They're physically your, yeah. lifting me. Mm -hmm. there, is an, uh, there is a conversation still of doing the one that I actually go up into mm -hmm. the sky. Mm -hmm. But the way that they've done it, actually, we might still be able to get away with it. It's still a conversation. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit more about how they're planning on doing it? Um, VFX wise, I to be honest, I don't really understand the conversation. That's how <laughs> that's how much I'm like I don't get it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that they're gonna paint it, mm -hmm. but because of the it's semi done physically, practically, because I was lifted, and mm -hmm. then they had that the reason why they put the green screen behind I see, is okay. for this reason. Mm -hmm. So that's the extent to what I understand. And then there is this moment that uh jack shot me from pretty much the waist up mm -hmm. so you see the sky so it does look like i'm flying so you don't see my feet so then the combo of the shots from my feet being up to the shot from me from the waist up and the sky only uh from the bottom up mm -hmm. and then the green screen effects that they had um the sheet behind me i think that that's the one that they would want to paint over and make it look like i'm actually flying and you don't have to utilize one effect over the other mm -hmm. you know you can a combination of all three or two or mm -hmm. you know uh or two i think is the right <clears throat> excuse me is the right um approach to mm -hmm. kind of doing these things because when you have something practical and then when you have something visual marrying them together makes it feel more alive, more mm -hmm. lived in. When it's just visual effects, it's yeah. like, ah, okay, like it's a, it's a VFX. Yeah. You know, when it's just special effects, for example, like you have a prop uh, that's like a, a monster prop, for example, in the new Aliens movie, they have little face huggers. Mm -hmm. You know the face huggers are an mm -hmm. alien? Where they mm -hmm. on your face and they impregnate you with eggs. They had them on little like wheels, so they were practical, mm -hmm. and they had their little legs moved when, mm -hmm. when, they, when they were dri driven around. But it looked fake. Sure. But if you have that active element, the actors can react to it. Of course. And then you can use that as a baseline for uh, 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 the effects model because it'll help you with placement, mm -hmm. uh, perspective, and lighting. Yeah. You know, and uh, I remember a long time ago, I was watching the um, the behind the scenes for Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It was the Robert Rodriguez movie. And they were trying to, f they were doing the moment where, I believe her name was Sama, it was Sama Hayek? Was she in it? I, I think, think it was so. her, right? Yeah, yeah. She was throwing knives yeah. from her hands. And so what they did is they just had her like walk up to camera and just go bloop with her hand towards the camera as because knives were going to fly sure. out of it. And then they had her stand still and they just physically took knives, like metal knives, props, and then went from her hand past the camera, from her hand past the camera. 
in order to get that reference. Sure. And so it was kind of a mix of practical mm -hmm. effects. I mean, it wasn't on camera, but um, it was a cool technique that I, I I try to use now with my with my projects is you know get real life references mm -hmm. because sometimes people you know they can they can get references that re references after the fact, but matching it exactly to your project is going to be really hard sure. if, if it's not, you know, from the, if you're not using material from the day up. Do you have anything to say to add about? Yeah, no, I think flexibility is key. Like just because again, that day, if it wasn't for Jack and Michelle, um, having spoken about this before and Jack having the green screen and having ways, other ways and in, in, because we having other ways to like to do the do shot it, yeah mm -hmm. we would not have been able to finish the movie yeah and that's a, a big problem yeah so. and we'll talk about this in the final episode mm -hmm. but a lot of the film came out of your own pocket oh yeah which is also scary when you Very. put your own money behind Very. a film and and then you're like oh no what if it doesn't go wrong exactly. I have, it has to be perfect exactly but it doesn't you just have to finish it exactly and, yeah. exactly uh, i guess we should have opened with the idea of like what's the difference between practical effects and special effects and VFX. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know? Uh, well, practical, as I'm assuming, from what I've learned <laughs> through this situation, mm -hmm. uh, is something that you can do physically mm -hmm. with a device, whether it's a light or, like what you were saying, the knives or mm -hmm. something that you can physically, practically yeah. do. Mm -hmm. um, then VFX is you have to digitally do it. So you have to have a special effects effects uh, artist mm. painted and digitize digitize it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. The tracks. Yeah. Oh yeah. What is special effects? So special effects is I, I I think like the difference between practical effects and special effects depending on you know who you ask you can have different answers. For me, I think they're very different. For some people, they're probably the same thing. Mm -hmm. So special effects is like. Uh, you know, squibs blowing up in your body, like uh, bullet wounds, you know, like like a monster. A sure. monster is a special, special effect. effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, for me, practical effects would be something that's like a, like a real thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, doing my news report, mm -hmm. like having it be on TV that I created before, that would be practical. Gotcha. Maybe someone would call it special. Um, you know, I'm not a special effects artist, so, you know, for me, it's more of like this, I'm just gonna put on the hat. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna put it on and wear it and and, and try to try to do the thing. Yeah. And so, like for example, in uh, Lord of War, they had a sequence where um, it was a movie about gun running, mm -hmm. smuggling guns with Nicolas Cage, and he in the movie had a warlord or a person he was selling a gun to test the firearm. Mm -hmm. And for that sequence, they shot a real gun. Mm -hmm. That's practical. So, you know, it's kind of like the real versus the tangible but fake mm -hmm. versus the fake and digital. Sure. So that would be my uh, definition for all three. Zena, thank you for uh, a wonderful episode, too. So the next episode, we're going to talk about um, writing what you know. And I think it's a good segue from this episode because we talked a lot about problem solving. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about uh, this short and kind of, you know, that concept of really writing from your own kind of personal place of pain, I guess? Because we talked a little bit about this before. And for me, uh, there's a couple of things that I wrote that were like, ooh, this hurts and I'm going to live with it forever because it's a film yeah. now. And uh, I think we wanted to discuss uh, the, the how do you live with something that you've written that maybe hurts, but you did it because you needed to get it out. Sure. Thank you again for coming on. We'll see you next week. Thanks for having yeah. me. All right. Bye, everyone. Yes. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Anywood Podcast. You can find us on anywhere you find your podcasts and on Instagram at Anywood Pod. See you next time. From the CFA Network, cinematography for actors is bridging the gap through education and community building. Find out about us and listen to our other podcast at cinematographyforactors.com. Cinematography for Actors Institute is a 501c3 nonprofit. For more information on fiscal sponsorship, donations, because we're tax exempt now, so it's a tax write off. And upcoming education, you can email us at contact at cinematographyforactors.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm.